pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is an open public hearing and is being recorded by the city. The stations may also broadcast. The number of board members present is seven. It will require four votes for a majority. As some individuals, well, this is really superfluous because nobody's on Zoom and they're all here. So I'm not gonna read that part. Um, state your names before you speak on the issue. And what we have today is we have the minutes from last meeting to be approved. And has everybody had time to read the minutes? Yes. Are there any questions or disagreements with what's in the minutes? Not hearing any, any I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I move that the minutes for November 17th be approved. Second. I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll abstain since I wasn't here. Okay. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, number five, is a public hearing item for variance B22-007. And George, do you want to handle that? Yes, sir. Thank you. So this is a variance that has some history, so I'm gonna give you a sh very short history uh, of the situation. Uh, it will help explain why uh, the variances are being asked for today. Just to point out, the um, property is zone multifamily. This particular section was called out in our staff report regarding which section of the code the variances are going to apply to. The property in question is off of South Granite Street. Um, there are two South Granite Streets just because we're Prescott and we have to do things like that. There's South Granite West and South Granite. It's off of South Granite West. Uh, the properties are two properties which um, you can see in the aerial photo. I'm gonna point out a couple of things for you. Um, the property line between the two properties is currently here. This is a carport structure. This is a house, and this is a house. Effectively, two houses on this lot. The carport attached to this house is on this lot. In an effort to correct this historical situation and have each of the two residential structures separated on their own lots, the proposal was made to do a lot line adjustment that would move this line back here and then create a flag lot so that this one had frontage on the street. Because we have existing structures on existing lots, there's not much you can do to make them conform to today's setback requirements, and we have a number of variances that are triggered by this lot line adjustment. The necessity of correcting the historical uh, situation where there are two homes on one lot um, basically requires that we come before you for, sorry, I'm adjusting my face on this microphone differently, uh, come before you for a, a number of variances, and I will point those out momentarily. Uh, the purpose, again, is to allow the lot line adjustment so that we have a house on a lot and a house on a lot which is the, the desire of both property owners uh, as part of this application. Brief overview again, showing the setback requirements. Um, we've given you details in your staff report uh, of each of the individuals, and I, I will touch each of the individual locations, but basically we're dealing with, with four situations. In making the lot line adjustment so that the house at the rear, that's this one, has frontage on the street, it's called an alley, but it's their primary access, um, the lot that's created here will be somewhat below the minimum requirements for that zoning district. So there's a, a minimum lot size variance. 
the lot line placement is the minimum necessary to provide the the property boundary, the separation between each of the properties. So you have a lot line setback requirements that are, again, already existing structures. Not much we can do about it. They're not moving the buildings. Uh, for this location, the space that will be the rear of this property and the front of this property, so that area. There is a side setback issue here Again, existing structure, existing property lines, and a side setback issue here, same situation, existing structure, but in order to create this lot line and separate these two buildings, um, this is necessary. Again, the current lot line runs approximately right there, leaving the carport on one lot, um, that lot belonging to the owner of this house, but the house itself and the property owner of the back lot, um, both of their houses are on the back lot. Unusual circumstance, I've seen it a couple of times in Prescott where lots have been divided over decades. This division and this situation probably comes from as far back as the 1940s. Um, we have a lot of historic situations similar to that. Zoom in a little bit and um, help lay out some of those criteria a little bit clearer. Again, we have a, a lot size question for this lot, and that is that it's um, below the 6,000 square feet. It's just barely below. It's below by less than 200 square feet, but it's below, so a variance is necessary. We have a, a setback requirement that normally for a rear property line would be 20 feet, but there's only about 10 feet between the two buildings, so you can't get to 20 feet. Um, so they're requesting uh, a, a one and a half foot setback there. Again, the existing buildings are already in place. Um, a reduction on this side setback to four feet, a little over four feet instead of seven. And then another reduction in setback that's on this location of about one and a half feet to that sideline. I will point out from the larger picture that that one and a half feet is actually a separation between the building and the property line, but everything adjacent to that is the flag lot portion of the back lot, the proposed flag lot portion of the back lot, and therefore no structure would be able to be built in there because you couldn't meet new setback requirements for new construction. So the variances are all for existing buildings on existing footprints that um, simply can't be addressed any other way. Um, separating the two lots is necessary in order to resolve the, the question of ownership and to allow properties to be conveyed in the future. We have to have the variances in place. Staff has been working with the families involved in these two uh, properties for 12 years, 10 years. Uh, on and off to get this moved forward. A lot of negotiation has occurred between them. They have agreed to these lines and we have agreed to support the variance. So staff is in support of granting these variances. Um, the four listed in the bullet points. Um, and I'm prepared to answer questions you may have regarding, um, regarding these situations. Thank you, George. Um, prior to going there, in going to the commission, I wanted to acknowledge Councilman Montoya and Councilwoman Cantalmi. Thank you for being here. So, board members, you have some questions and input that you would like to have addressed. Mr. Chair, Mark Hupness here. Question for staff. How did we get into this situation? What were, were the buildings built without permits or? At the time the structures were originally constructed, um, we, did, we didn't actually issue building permits. They're really old structures on a really old situation. Uh, again, we have historical situations like this that occur sometimes. This one in particular, um, the buildings have been in existence for a long time. So it, it wasn't that anything was done illegally. It simply wasn't a requirement at the time the buildings were constructed. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Any more questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is Larry Meads. Uh, thank you, Mr. Worley, and I appreciate what you're 
your department did in researching this, it's uh, kind of unusual, but it needs to be addressed. Uh, now, am I correct in that you're, we're gonna go from two lots to three, or just we're gonna revise the shape of them? Let me go backwards to another picture. I don't know if that's really gonna show you. It's actually going from three to two. From three to um, two. There is a property at the front, a property at the rear, and then this long, narrow strip was acquired by the property owners some time ago that will be combined together when the lot line adjustment occurs. So we're going from three to two. It's a reduction in the number of lots. It just changes the shapes of the lot significantly. Instead of rectangles, this one will become a flag lot with an extension that goes up to, um, again, what's called an alley, but it's their primary physical access to the property. And where, where is the line between the two lots? Uh, right now? If revised as proposed. As proposed, that line is this shape. I so see this why I property, was confused. This property is, um, uh, again, just slightly smaller than 6,000 square feet, but this one is more or less a rectangle, and then this property will be the flag property. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Any more Mr. questions? Mr. Chairman, yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Mary Fredrickson. Is the flag pole part of the n new flag lot, is that how they currently approach the alley? This is the current access to the back lot. So part of the lot line adjustment was to resolve an access question of the back property crossing the front property. This changes that so that the back property has direct frontage on the alley and it becomes a single parcel. But it, it just reflects what is currently It reflects current act. Yes. They exactly. travel. They're, that back lot travels along that stretch. That is okay. correct. Thank you. There, there are some uh, additional easements that will be part of the, the, um, the actual lot line adjustment, but they aren't affected by the, the variances. The variances are too hard to property lines, not easements. Thank you for your question and thank you for your answer. Are there any more from the, the board that um, you want addressed? Mr. Chair? Yes. Mark Hopeness again, question for staff. Any, um, I believe the picture, if you could go back to the aerial photograph, there's a house um, to the left, up that one there. Yes. Does it have adequate setbacks with the proposal you have here? It does, so as you can see, the front property which will be uh, changed because this flag lot creation will occur here. The structures are all well back behind this property. The setback requirements from the front property line for any future construction are 20 feet, which puts it back in line with that. There is a 10-foot strip along here that was acquired uh, years ago that will be incorporated, and that 10-foot strip actually creates the, the required setback. Excellent. Okay, and then a, a, a follow-up question. Any comments from um, any of the residents in the neighborhood? We did not get any objections or um, letters of support uh, for this. Um, this is a situation that's known to the neighborhood that the, they've been working to correct it. So I think there's been plenty of time for folks to get used to the idea of the proposed uh, lot line adjustment. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Any more from the board? Okay, I'll uh, open this up for public discussion. And if you would wish to address the board or the proposer, please come to the microphone, state your name and your address, and ask your question. Morning Commission, Scott Lyon, Lyon Engineering. 1650 Willow Creek Road, representing our clients on behalf of them here to answer any questions as well. George ran through it extensively, so there's not a lot I can add to it other than history and or just um, one of the other primary concerns is trying to prevent a uh, parcel from being landlocked at this point too. So um, again, if any other questions, again, George did an excellent job, so there's not much for me to elaborate on so appreciate your time and consideration and again I'm here for any questions thank you very much 
any other questions or comments from the public? Not hearing any, um, I would entertain a motion from the board. Mr. Chairman, uh, let me read up. I move to approve V23-001. It's, it's, it's a different one, 2207, sorry. That's, that's Excuse it. me. Then I move to approve V22-007 per the site plan provided. Second. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we're gonna move on. Thank you, Chairman, members of the board, Tammy DeWitt, community planner at the city of Prescott. So this is another kind of strange one that we may see more of as um, we see more developments come in. All the easy properties in Prescott have been developed, so what we're seeing are the more difficult properties that are now starting to be developed in some of these older areas. And with that came uh, new codes that have been implemented. Um, our fire department, when they adopted their newest code, there was a change to the slope requirement for driveways. So we're starting to see that starting to affect some of the newer um, projects that are coming forward in housing developments where they have to now take in consideration the slope of the driveway. And with some of these steep lots that we have left to be developed, we're seeing some creativity going on, and so we may see some more re uh, requests similar to this one. So this one, they're asking for a variance to increase the allowed. So per our land development code, and residential areas are allowed a 35 foot maximum height. So that we measure from the existing natural grade to the highest point of a vertical plane. So when they're having to bring in fill to a property when you have a slope lot, they're losing height. Because if they have to bring in fill, they're losing height from that natural grade. If they're cutting into a bank, they increase the height and they're allowed more height. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So for this one, what they're kind of having to do is this has the existing grade here, and they're having to bring in about eight feet of fill to build up the lot. It's pretty steep when you, if you, well, Hacienda is all gated and very steep up there. Um, this one, right from the road, it drops straight down to the golf course. So it was a very vertical, steep slope, and it was very hard to take a picture to show you, but um, but this kind of shows that this is a, the sl existing slope, and they're gonna have to bring in the grade, and then it's order to get the driveway to the slope that the fire department can approve for residential houses. So this is the site plan in question. So the driveway's coming here off the road here. And like I said, it's very, as you can see from the contour line somewhat, it's very steep going down. Um, and then they're building the, the pad back here. In Hacienda, we also have platted um, approved building envelopes that they have to maintain. Because of the slope, they can only disturb 50% of the lot or develop 50%, and so they have to maintain within that area. So this kind of shows the, the profiles that they provided. This is the existing grade here, and this is the maximum height. So we measure in a vertical plane, so what they did was they drew the, the straight line from the, the existing grade, and then here's the vertical line. And this is at about 42 so feet. Then we have this extra little peak here that b bumps it up to the request that's being required, that little extra bit right here to meet the height requirement. But as you can see, they have to bring in about eight feet or more of fill here to get the building up high enough so the driveway can meet the slope requirements for the fire department code. This is something the other developments or housing projects in Hacienda did not have to adhere to because that this is a code that just came in play a couple of years ago. Then here's the other um, one that shows from the front or the side. So and here's the slope, and then here's the vertical plane line. We did send notices out to all the property owners within 300 feet. Um, we did get one letter of opposition from this resident right here who does, this is the access from the gated area 
by here, so they do have to drive by it. Um, the other houses are set down lower, but they, like I said, they didn't have to meet that slope requirement. So this house has to be built up a little bit higher than the other houses just to meet this, the fire code requirements in order to develop their property. So that when they bought the property, this code wasn't in place. So now that they're coming forward and developing it, they have to meet other code requirements that other properties in the area did not have to meet. And this is an up close. It is right, right adjacent to the golf course. And it does drop down very significantly right from the road. And this kind of shows this is the road dropping down to the golf course. Because as you can see, it's pretty steep down this bank. And then here's another picture trying to, trying to show it. It's really hard because it is very thick of trees. Um, this was reviewed by all our reviewing agencies. And um, there was no issues or concerns with the request as presented. And that concludes my presentation. I'm free to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Tammy. <coughs> questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, T Tom Davis, uh, Tammy. Um, can you go back to the uh, diagram with the, uh, where the uh, height, uh, that dashed line is, is, is the 42, um, what, seven inch line? Correct, and then we have this little peak here that we added the extra to make sure to capture that so we capture all of it because okay. that should have been, that will be included that's in not the, the 35 foot line that's the that's the that's the 42 yeah, and, yeah. End result question second question is that um, there's a homes on each side mm -hmm. the one to the west appears to be almost um, the mirror image of this site plan uh, uh, except flipped okay and the driveway is is relatively, I guess, accessible, lack of a better term. The one, the one yeah, to, to the bottom, maybe that's south, excuse me, southwest, whatever. Um, so that, is that, that home about the same height? Because that home is substantially higher than the one to the n north of that lot. This one looks like that they may have got a, I didn't see any other variances in this area when I looked at our, our layers that show us other pro projects, right. but they could have got a, an exemption or something to reduce that front setback to bring it forward, because it looks like it's fo more forward than what the setback requires. Right. So with the, because of the slope of the property, they could get a 10% decrease in the required. But with Hacienda, it's a little different out here because they have um, approved envelopes that they have to maintain, but those could be adjusted with approval from the HOA. So that's something they could have got on this lot was an adjustment of that to bring it forward to meet, uh, to not be so steep. Right. So my, my question goes to, I'm wondering why uh, that home and this, this proposal aren't similar, or you know, why, why wouldn't they go to the same uh, extent to conform to the height that's next door? Because this one did not have to meet the slope requirement for the driveway. So it, it, it doesn't appear that that driveway, though, on that home is that steep. But they could have also brought the house forward to get closer to the road to reduce that too. Okay. I, we, we, I'd have to look at the, see if we have plans for it to see what they did. But in this case, they have a p building envelope that's approved. They're trying to stay within that. Yeah. And then so, but to do that, they have to raise it up to meet the slope requirement for the, and this may not have been as steep too. I mean, I, I, you'd have to look at the existing, the terrain that was there before. They could have met the height or it might not be as tall. Okay. Now the la last question is, uh, where, where does it stand and are our decisions stand in relationship with the homeowner association's approval? They had no concerns with the request. They, they review all the building permits and they, they didn't have a concern so with that. That's been done? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. Any other questions at the board? Mr. Chair, Mark Upness. Yes, um, it, Looking at the, uh, if you could go back to the photograph that shows the slope, that one there, thank you. It appears, since this structure doesn't exist and isn't built, that one could design around this. You, it, they simply need to lower the roof line in that one area, is that correct? No, it would be the whole thing, because this is a 42 
40 foot, 42 foot, seven inches, they'd have to lower the whole house. So basically what they're asking for the house, if you looked from the, the, when it, the finished grade, it'll meet the height requirements. It's because of all this fill, they have to bring it up. The pad, the building pad, they have to bring up eight feet approximately to be able to get the house, to, a 35 foot house in there to meet the slope requirement for the driveway. Or they can lower the, the height of the planned construction. I mean, we're seeing a, a plan here that doesn't comply with the, the requirements. You could design a home that does comply with the requirements, couldn't you? They, po they possibly could. Um, the, the, these are similar design house to the rest of the Hacienda area. So I don't know if it, that there's a size requirement for the house or something they have to meet up there. So so I guess I'm not understanding the, the picture properly. How, how much of an encroachment on the height, um, how far in excess of the um, regulations? They're asking for a maximum of 43 foot, seven inches. So, so that's to- Eight feet? Yeah, so that's for this point here. So this line is about 42 feet, seven inches. Then when we add this little corner here, that meets the, the request they're asking for, the 43 foot, seven inches. Okay, so if I go back to that picture, if I cut off that corner that you just described, if that didn't exist, would the house be compliant? No. This line right here is 42 feet 7 inches. 42. So They're what allowed 35. Right. But where, where else on the physical house am uh, I encroaching? Uh, your it'd line? It'd be about right here. It'd be a, 35 feet would probably be about, okay. about okay. here. So that, uh, I misunderstood that the line up above was the code. So you don't have the code line on that description no they're showing what they're requesting 35 feet would probably be about right like th right through the all this area here so, so they'd have to they'd still have to build the how the pad up no matter what right. they have to right. build That's the pad the up for the driveway yes but they'd have the, another alternative is they could request a variance on the house setback as you said pull it in towards the road. But whether that would help or not, because of how steep it is, it may not meet still meet the slope requirement. Yeah, somebody has to do some geometry and find out if that helps. But this is what's before you today. I understand. Yeah. But I'm just trying to see, are there alternatives for the homeowners so they can have use of the property? And I think the answer is absolutely. I'd have to defer that to the designer to see if this is what else they may be able to do. So that, that's not my job. Okay, no, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for your question and the discussion there. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. This is Larry Meads. I have some questions as well for Mr. Witt. Um, it, I kind of I appreciate what Mark is saying because it could be helpful to us to have seen where's that 35-foot line and... I know the pictures don't really do it justice, the photos, because it drops off pretty fast mm -hmm. from the road. So there's not a lot. I don't think moving it up to the side of the road, any, any amount would really accommodate this home and that 35 feet mm -hmm. and the driveway slope. Correct. So another question I have, Tammy, is uh, would sp fire sprinklers in the home uh, mitigate that? Slope no. requirement? No. Thanks for letting me know. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> Chairman, Any more questions from yes. the board? Yes. I don't know if it's a question or a comment, uh, but I do have concern that we're being asked to consider this plan as if it is the only plan possible for that lot. If that were the case, I, I might con think of it differently, but as it is, uh, as Mark was indicating, we really don't have any input from the, uh, the construction firm or the owners as to other plans that might have been considered that would be able to reach both of the requirements, both the height requirement and the driveway pitch requirement. And they're here to answer any questions you have about that. I guess if they are here to answer, uh, I would want to hear that. Sure. 
Thank you, thank you, Mary. It sounds to me appropriate to have <clears throat> either the representative of the owners or the owners come up and address the board as to why they chose a plan outside of the code as, as it exists. Good morning. Uh, my name is Scott Nalda. I'm with Crystal Creek Builders, um, here to represent the, uh, the homeowners. So when we started working with the Schultz family, um, this was prior to, as, as Tammy said, the driveway slope code changing. Uh, the original plan was to locate the house farther down the hill, but just like the house on the, on the right. So we kind of have both things going on. The house to the left is up higher, the house to the right is down lower. Um, if you look at the back of the house to the left, there is a retaining wall with some fill. Now, I don't know any history of that home, but it appeared to me that it had been elevated as well. Um, the house to the right was what we had intended to do was take it down lower, get it uh, you know, farther down the lot. When you're dealing with the slopes, you, you mitigate slope with distance. So the idea of pulling it closer to the road only exacerbates the angle of the driveway, uh, as was mentioned there. So pulling it forward uh, would only make that angle steeper. And so, as I said, we started out with them with one intention. COVID hit, one of the, uh, Mr. Schultz got very sick. We had to put things on hold. In the meantime, you know, the change was made on the slope. Uh, this is the, the home that they intended to build. Uh, when you think about could a different plan be made, in reality, in my mind, no, because like I say, if you pull it up the hill, you're only making that driveway steeper. Even if you had a single, a, a non-walkout basement home, we're still dealing with a code that starts from natural grade. And so that won't change. Uh, that's my opinion. Do you agree with that, Timmy? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't, I don't agree that something different could be done that would tangibly change the outcome of this. We're fighting two criteria. We have the height maximum. We have the slope maximum now that are in conflict with one another on a, on a site like this. Um, so the other thing to, to consider is one side of the house to the other side of the house, the slope goes down and it also slopes one direction slightly more than the other. So when you're looking at these illustrations, it's not that necessarily on that one side everything is, is going to be exceeding it. This is the worst case scenario as was pointed out. But again, the idea that we could go back and create something different, we can't lift the house more because we're still in, in excess of the height maximum. If we pull it forward, we're gonna have to raise it even more because we have to mitigate that angle of driveway. So Mr. Chairman, I have a question, um, uh, Tom Davis. Um, as, I, as I alluded to in my earlier discussion was the house on the left, you call, is, is, is fairly high, okay? Is it, it, do you know if that exceeds the 35-foot height limit at all? I do not. I don't know the history of the home, uh, do, so do I, you, I can't answer that. Do you know uh, if that slope on that driveway is similar to what you're proposing? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't have any information on that home. I know the, the one to the right of it, just by visually looking at it, it's very steep going down, yeah. which was, again, the original intent to get the house, you know, lower uh, so that we weren't exceeding any, any height maximums. But I don't know the answer to what their slope is or the height or anything else. But also, those were developed prior to the new fire code. Oh, I, I totally understand that. I'm just trying to get a relationship. Um, where I'm going, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, uh, where I'm going is that I really don't maybe have a, a problem with the proposal if it's either exactly the same or similar to the house next door, that house, the house on the left. It appears the house on that left is pretty high from the standpoint of being at grade, driving by it, whatever the case may be. The problem I have is that if this, this proposal is enjoying something special that none of the other houses are, have enjoyed, 
See what I'm saying? So um, that's, that's, that's my issue right here. Well, I guess I would, I would respond to that this way. If we had been able to put the house where we intended originally, we wouldn't have this issue. But the code changed with the driveway slope. I understand. And so now we have both that we're, we're trying to comply with. And many of these remaining properties in these communities are the steeper properties. I understand. And it, it makes it more difficult to, and in some cases, in my view, impossible to meet both. Um, the, the other thing to consider is the across the street of the front, that, that hill is coming down, sloping toward the golf course. So the homes on the other side of the street are elevated even more. There's no homes behind it because you have the fairways and the golf course. So it's not obstructing anybody's views. And it's, you know, this, the house is starting uh, below the road, so it's not like it's up high and it's imposing, you know, height above the road. So I don't feel there's any impact on any of the neighboring views at all. Would it be safe to say that the house being designed here is similar in design to this one to the right? To this one? Or oh, similar? Yeah, I think the, the flavor of, most and of the homes in there are fairly, yeah. you know, consistent, yeah. We don't have extreme roof pitches. Uh, it's kind of this, the typical, you know, six to twelve pitch that you see on most of the homes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, this is Larry Meads. Um, I wonder if, Ms. DeWitt, could you show us again where the house is uh, from the people that sent the email? Oh. Yeah, they are right here. So they are around the corner. So this, they won't be, these houses are in the way, so they probably won't even see it. They'll just drive by it. Right. Well, my point is that in the past, we've, this board has approved variances um, in circumstances similar to this before us now. And one of the criteria I took into account, and I think other board members did as well, is does that encroach on anybody's view? And I agree with what Scott says that no is the answer in this case because of the golf course on the back side and on the front side, that's actually part of the community center so there's not going to be a home built there. Is that correct? There can't be a house built there, as far as you know, as far as I know. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. So I don't see any problem with disturbing someone's existing view if this, is, if this proposal is approved. Exactly. That, that's my, my position, yes. Thank you. And also, is there a size of house requirement in Hacienda? Uh, they have a minimum. This house, is, as most of them in there, are, are larger. I think they start at 2,200 square feet. Okay. Uh, but again, a good portion of, the, a portion of this home is, is down below. Yeah. But you're going to have a crawl space no matter how you build on that lot. So it's not, as you mentioned, we have building envelopes we have to stay within. So it's not as though we've expanded and made you know, a monstrous home. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mary Fredrickson. Uh, actually, my, my thought was less uh, whether or not the current plan for the home, which is not under construction yet, I'm, I'm assuming. No, it's, it's in process of, of, you know, plan review, yes. Okay. It's, it's not started. Okay. Uh, not so much that it could be moved closer to the road or back from the road or that the current plan could be moved somewhere else on the lot. It was more a thought as whether there was any consideration for whether a different plan for a house, a different house, not that house, but a different house, could be designed uh, that could accommodate both the pitch of the driveway and the height requirement, taking into consideration the slope. Not that house, a different house. Same lot, different house. Well, I, I guess theoretically, when you're, when you're looking at these types of properties, if you were to build the garage at a certain elevation and then have stairs that goes down to the front door, thereby, you know, keeping that height uh, shorter. Yes. But from a practical standpoint, I can tell you, you know, that's not what 
what these people had intended is now what the other people in Haciampa have gotten. We have had success, and, and as you said, we've had uh, variances for this very reason approved by this board in the past. Uh, it, it's, as Tammy said, it, it's gonna happen more and more. I mean, like I say, most of these communities, uh, the popular communities that, like Haciampa that are in the trees, most of the remaining properties are steep. And I've had meetings over the last couple of years as this started happening with the, the driveway change, you know, talking with staff about, well, how are we gonna make this work? Talking with the fire department because they're the ones who kind of, you know, change change the rule, and you know, in all of my conversations, it has been we understand what you're faced with, you know, we'll we'll work with you to, to try to make make this work. We haven't run into a, a site yet that we couldn't, but to your point, I think consideration has to be given to the property owner when they purchase this land. And what was you know enforcing at the time and up until the time that this was changed, you know their position is why are they being penalized and not being able to build the home that they want? We have the one on the right that's down below and it has a steep driveway. We have the one on the left that's up a little higher that has less of a steep driveway. But personally, if I had to build a garage up here and then have stairs down to my home. Our demographic here is such that, you know, most of the people we're building for are retirement age and older. Uh, they don't want to build a home like that. So, you know, from a design perspective, I think anything could probably be done. But is it something that, you know, is not only livable for the for the homeowner? Is it something that will be, you know, a problem if they ever decide to resale the home? So. All I can tell you is we started this project prior to the change being made. Uh, this is the home that they had dreamed of doing. And to make something that might possibly work, it would be a very extreme change. And I'm not sure that we could even make that, you know, something that somebody would like. Yeah, I, I appreciate your comments. You know, on, I, I live up in that area too. And the point is, I knew what I was buying when I bought it. So I'm just sharing that with you. It's, it's, it's on my mind. Um, you know, you do your due diligence before you write your check. Um, so I'm just sharing that with you. Are there any more comments from, thank you. Yeah, I don't have a question. <clears throat> I have a comment. I think we need to pay attention as a board to the letter from, um, I believe it's Mr. Smith. Um, and he makes an excellent point. Um, this is an eight foot, seven inch change to what is allowed in the, in, per the codes. <clears throat> and we, we shouldn't ignore that um, as a board. Uh, there are alternatives. The house doesn't exist. Uh, a different plan uh, could be presented. Uh, a different uh, request for a different variance on the, on the driveway slope. I mean, there are all our alternatives um, and uh, I, I agree with um, uh, with you on the you do your diligence when you build um, I live in a neighborhood with very steep lots um, and uh, uh, you know I don't want to see something done out of code in my neighborhood um, so I'm struggling to see um, why a variance should be be granted in this case thank you Thank you for your comments. Any more comments from the board? Not hearing any. I'm, oh. I'm sorry. For Mary Fredrickson, I would just like to point out that as Tammy indicated, as infill happens and the hard lots seek to be built upon, this is just gonna come up more and more and it's, I understand it feels unfair. Uh, we bought the lot, the driveway pitch was X and now it's Y and now we have to shrink maybe our dream home in order to comply with what is currently required. And that can be a sad fact of life. But the fact is, is that this is what the code is requiring. And I agree with Mark, I'm, I'm struggling to see why this is necessary given that the plan could change. That's all. 
Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have, Tom Davis, I have one more. Just to reemphasize, my, my thought is that that home on the, on the left, uh, that the home on the, on the left or the southwest, um, um, you know, appears to be, you know, when I drove by, uh, I'm, you know, I'm familiar with this area. It appears to me that it's almost the exact same, almost footprint uh, to, to what being proposed. And I would love to know, for example, my only point is that I, I wouldn't have a problem approving this site plan and the, and, the, and the building if it replicated exactly what that neighbor has. I think that that would be consistent with whatever has been approved in the past. And I don't know if it takes a variance on the driveway. I don't know if it takes a variance on the height. Uh, I, would, I, would like to have, I would have liked to have that information to know it, how that relates to that other house. And I do have a problem with exceeding a, a, as a lack of a better term, a, a precedent in a way that's going to come forward probably to us in the future about uh, exceeding the height limit by eight plus feet, not two, not one, eight, eight or more feet. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I think I just have a comment here, and if you will look in our packet on page two of this application, you'll see that staff provided a paragraph to describe the requirements for variance, and then they addressed those criteria one through five. And I think if you read that, my, my interpretation is that I'm, I'm fine with this application. And as far as the other folks that uh, sent in the email that were not in favor, if you look at where their house was, there are other homes around there that I could see an additional height might impact somebody's view because there are houses all around them. But that's not the case in this instance. So I'm sure another design could be done that would accommodate it, but I just think that's a pretty heavy hammer in this case. Thank you for your comments. Do we have any more from the board? I, I, excuse me, I would just like to say in that regard, I can guarantee you that, uh, that these people will not go forward with building the home that they intended to build. And again, uh, yes, I understand your point. At the same time, uh, why aren't they then allowed to have the driveway slope the way they wanted it? I mean, I, I understand from a life safety standpoint, the city has changed that code. I see the value in that. The Schultzes are not arguing that. They're spending a lot of extra money, you know, to raise the house up. Uh, but while the contours may seem similar, we don't know what the, I don't have the neighbors site plan. I don't know what the topographical survey showed, the contour lines, and I don't know at the time that that was built. I uh, don't know the year, but I do know that, you know, when you look at those things, when I look at the back of that home, there was fill back there because there's a retaining wall. So if there was fill, then obviously there was lifting of the home, which is what we're intending yeah. to do here. But this lot slopes hard as it goes down. And so again, if we pull it forward, we're gonna be in violation of, of that driveway slope because the farther up the hill you go, closer to the road, the steeper that angle is, which means you know, you're raising the house more and more and more. So I don't believe that there's a reasonable design that's gonna accommodate both codes that we're trying to meet here. And as I said, we've, we've had this uh, our company has had this uh, situation in, in other neighborhoods in the past, and we were granted a variance for the very same reason. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Ms. DeWitt. Uh, is the driveway slope subject to a variance? No. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, any more questions from the board? Now I'm going to go to the public. We have a lady. I, I know that. Okay. <laughs> that nice. You've been jumping up and down. <laughs> I, got, I know. I'm, uh, I'm meeting downstairs. I'm on the Charter Amendment Committee. So our 
chair was late, so I can come back and speak to you guys. My name is Bonnie McMinn. I live at 954 Broken Branch. I live in Hacienda. I walk on Lodge trail, trail Circle almost every day. And I object to this variance because um, I built my home 14 years ago, as many of you alluded. We followed the rules. And if the rules changed, you know, my rules changed in the middle and we had to sprinkle every room in our house kind of thing. So you adapt to what the present rules are. 35 feet for residential, 50 feet for uh, commercial. Uh, I can answer the question about the southwest driveway. It's a very short driveway level with the house. So, I, you know, while I understand that it's difficult if you have to re do your plans because you don't have the ability. If you've seen that lot, it's extremely narrow, it's extremely steep. And one could argue that maybe a house should not be built there. I live in an area near there. My house is not in view of this or anything like that, but I feel compelled to speak because I live in the neighborhood. Um, there are two lots below me. What will happen if they decide that they want something higher, if something occurs and they have to do that? So I think that you've got rules in place for a reason, and it's hundreds of homes have been built in Hacienda, and we've pretty much all abided by those rules. I can't say that there's been variances and so forth. There was a variance required, requested on my street. We fought it. They wanted it taller, and they wanted to go outside the building envelope. We have rules for a reason, and Hacienda was a very carefully planned community, and we have to respect those rules, and we have to respect the other homeowners in the, in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Any more discussion on the board? Hmm. Any more oh, discussion from the public? I have a question. All right. My name is Anna Smith. I'm at 5 Microphone. Microphone. Yeah. Stay away. Microphone down. My name is Anna Smith. I'm at 503 Lodge Trail. Um, I'd like to know the homes that are right next to that lot that had the steeper drives, how far out of code are they? I can't answer that question. Why not? That's something I think sh that should be answered. If they have those driveways that go down. So each, for variances, we look at each individual lot for their situation because each individual lot is is unique to itself. So when we, I did look and see if there were other variances, I didn't show any in, in the layer that I have the information I had available to me at the time. So we are looking at this lot in the situation of this lot that in the variances that were granted in other areas don't create a, um, what's the word I'm looking for again? Precedent, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can think of the word, but um, so each individual lot is looked at the har hardship that is on this lot. So this lot, we have extreme slope, a code change. They had a house designed for what it was like before. So now they're adapting to the new codes. So instead of asking to come up further and further um, up, up, like he said, the, the, ste the driveway, was, the steepness will still be an issue. In regards to this one adjacent to it, it has a steep driveway that, that does not meet code requirements because the house is set down lower. We can assume same slope, slope, this did not meet the code requirements, but it's existing. So when code changes, they don't have to adapt. This one is under new code requirements for the driveway slope, and this is what they're doing to try to adapt to that for something they had planned a few years ago. So they do have a hardship that runs with the land, which meets the criteria. It's not self-imposed. They bought the land with the intent of developing it. They've been meeting all the codes that they can. So this is the only code they're asking for to ask for a waiver for. Um, this one, I don't know, on the south, they may have got a topographic exemption, but these do have approved building envelopes. So any changes to those building envelopes have to be approved by the HOA. So they may have got a building envelope adjustment to move the house or increase the size or something with the HOA. Because of the slope of these, they can only develop or disturb 50% of the lot. So there still are other restrictions that are still restricting what they can do with the lot. So I hope that helped answer some questions. Thank you. It, it, it clarified some things. 
Um, it's, I think it still doesn't really answer my question of build a driveway that does meet code and the house has to, has to go with that. I mean, you can't build it up that far. That's just, and it, you, it evidence is there are two other houses there and maybe the driveway's not quite to code, but they're down lower. And their driveways don't. have to don't, build up eight feet. I, I don't know that. I'd have to, we'd have to find their plans. Well, I think there's some questions unanswered. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner. Mr. Chair, Mark Oakton is here. Um, Ma'am, you live in the neighborhood? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Um, again, for, for my fellow board members, um, if we want to change the code for steep lots in the, the city of Prescott, that's not our role. Uh, we don't do that. Um, and I saw on the picture, it looks like there's an open lot across the street. I don't know if that's steep, if, we're gonna, if they're going to have similar issues. Um, there are, as the lady uh, properly s stated, there are alternatives for this homeowner. Um, and they can meet the existing code another way. Uh, so I, I struggle. We have neighbors that object. Uh, we have a, uh, an HOA that has rules, and they all want the rules from the HOA to be enforced. I think the city rules and regulations should be enforced as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions from the board? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Tony Teeters. Did the Homeowners Association approve this pending our approval of this height? Yeah, I believe that we already have a permit. Yes, we already have a permit in place. So this is so we do have they submitted a building permit. We caught the height. So this is the process we're going through right now. So the homeowners association says it's okay with them if it's okay with us. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Tony. Any other comments? Any more comments or in, input from the public? Mr. Chairman, this is Larry Meads. I just want to emphasize that uh, approving this would not change the slope requirements or change the height requirements for any other lot in the city. It, it's only for this particular site. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Not hearing any other comments from the public, I would entertain a motion with regards to this variance. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. And let me find the variance. To approve V23-001 to allow a single family residence height to be 43, seven, 43 foot 7 inches per the site plan and renderings provided. Do I have a second? Jim Myers here, I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving this site plan, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying aye. aye. I won't say aye, I'll help, I'll say nay. 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 Okay. So, four, one, two, three, four, three. Four, three. All right. Passes four, three. All right. Moving right along. Um, we don't have any updates. Um, I don't think we have any applications for next month, but we'll let you know as soon as we, we have meet tomorrow and we'll go over our things to see what we have, if we have anything for you for next month. But otherwise, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I wonder if we could have Ms. Chelsea Walton introduce herself to this board. We're in there. <laughs> Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Meads. Good after morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, it's, it's Thursday morning. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Chelsea Walton. I've been appointed the Interim Community Development Director, and it's my pleasure to be here in support of staff, in support of this uh, board, and in support of all the other city functions as it relates to development services in the city of Prescott. I've been with the city for about five years now, and I've served in the city manager's office as the uh, development services facilitator, quality assurance manager, ombudsman, kind of everything related related to uh, development services, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Without hearing any other. Mr. Chairman, uh, just before we break up, I just wanted to apologize. Last meeting, uh, I, did not, I did not attend, and that's, the yeah, unattendance is not why I really apologize to you and the staff is that I didn't let you know that I was not going to show. And I had a little emergency, and I was in, I was, all of a sudden I was in Scottsdale at about 9.30 in the morning, and uh, uh, I just realized that I didn't let the staff know that it, you, you know, I know it's important to have a quorum, and I just want to apologize that I didn't let people know that I did, wasn't attending. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And with not hearing anything else, we're adjourned. <laughs>